Uh, good morning, Munir Ajam speaking. Um, in this video, actually uh, was triggered today by some of the posts that I've seen online over the last two days, uh, and they relate to the question of project ethics and professional ethics that we have been discussing in the last two videos. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the topic and talk about uh, something I saw today. There was a question posted by one of these PMP prep companies basically asking people the following question. You are a project manager in a company. You just hired a new employee. And this new employee, you find out that many of the ideas this new employee has, it come from a competitor. Where do you implement those ideas? And the four answers given, one of them says, um, yes, apply those ideas. And of course, that would be violation, uh, ethical, and maybe even legal violation. And it could, uh, uh, if the competitor find out, it could uh, result in consequences, legal consequences for your employer. Another answer would be also similar situation, said, yeah, implement the ideas, but tell the employee, the new employee, not to mention those ideas came from competitor. Obviously, in this case, is also uh, there could be legal consequences if these things, if the competitor find out. So both of these options are technically unethical and illegal um, because technically it's considered stealing ideas, even though the company did not stole these ideas directly. They stole them indirectly through an employee who is willing to bring in their information, the uh, competitor information with them. The third answer was, uh, it says that basically, oh, ask the employee to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, and basically, in a way, what this is mean is that, well, any ideas that the employer, the employee would submit, that basically the company could play them, and said, well, these are the ideas of the employees, uh, and he signed an NDA, we have nothing, so they implement the ideas, yeah, and of course, if something happened, they blame the employees, and they try to get away with it. Of course, this might be legal, maybe, I don't know, depending on what country you are, uh, but Probably, if they know, uh, let's assume it's, le uh, it's legal. I don't think it is, but assuming it's legal, but still unethical. The fourth option given, which is probably semi, I call it partially ethical, is that, of course, refuse to implement those ideas. Okay, great. So, as PMP exam prep question, what uh, perspective? Yeah, this answer would be the right answer. However, the right answer, the real answer, from the real world, not from you know, a paper exam, is that uh, not given. And the answer should be to fire this employee immediately on the spot. Now, why am I being harsh here, or is, am I being harsh? Obviously, first, this, this, this person had brought on information, stole information from his ex-employer. This is supposed to be confidential information, and is sharing it with you. Yeah? That's a violation. So if this person is willing to do this, you discovered it now. So let's say, okay, we discovered, we don't allow him to implement these ideas, and you move on. And two months later, he bring in ideas. How do you know those ideas come from him or from another company that you don't know about? Yeah? So basically ignoring this, and you are, you've accepted someone who have proven to be unethical, potentially to steal ideas in the future from somewhere, from other companies or from friends or from the internet or whatever the case, and use them as his ideas, which could... Uh, of course, expose your company for legal action. And that would be considered unprofessional as a project manager uh, to accept that risk. This is a huge threat to your organization that the only way you cannot mitigate it, you know, the only way you can avoid it is by firing this person. Uh, another reason why justify firing this person, okay, beside protecting you as an organization from legal action from your competitor, how about if this person uh, you know, decide to quit your job and leave, go somewhere else and take your company ideas with them. How can you prevent that? Yeah? So you are exposing yourself to threats, major threats on both ends. One, either potentially exposing yourself for legal action by competitor or uh, risking that your information would walk to your competitor. So that's obviously um, uh, one of the issues. And unfortunately, the PMP... Uh, a question in this case, we don't know if it is a real question or not, obviously this company posting this question, is that's an indication that's really, you can still pass a PMP, but you don't know what the right answer or what the right things to do. Another uh, example came, I think yesterday, we saw online also posted online, is this guy, a gentleman, uh, I think on the ethics committee of PMI, basically was asking people in a certain group online, uh, obviously a certain project management group, is that asking them about the code of conduct and professional ethics. 
And many of the answer came said, well, you know, we don't know much about this stuff. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's not in the exam. Well, actually, it is in the exam. Because when someone submitted for PMP, they have to uh, click a box that said, yes, I've read the code of conduct. And many click this box without reading because they think it's not in the exam. Well, it is in the exam indirectly. Like the question we just posted, this is a, an ethics question. And the way to answer it is, of course, by knowing the code of conduct and professional ethics and some of the topics we've been discuss discussing over the last two days in the last videos. But uh, that kind of, uh, it was a funny post because it kind of reminded me of students you know, in schools and high schools and even university asking their teachers and professor, said, is this topic going to be in the exam? Uh, and if it's not in the exam, okay, we can go to sleep. Uh, if it's in the exam, we, f we pay attention and we study it. Uh, it's becoming like, uh, guys, you know, the exam is only a sample. You know, obviously, if you study, uh, maybe, you know, exams, whether in college or high school, they cannot ask you about everything you learn. And then, of course, depend on a, prof a certain profession. And maybe if the subject is not that important, okay, I wouldn't care. However, if the subject is important, we're going to focus only on what's in the exam. So is the purpose of learning is to pass an exam? I mean, think about this. Is the purpose of learning is to pass an exam? Is that the education system we want? Is that the real professional life we want? Is that how do we expect our people to behave and work and, and basically only what's in an exam? Okay, on the job, there are no exam. What do we do? Yeah, we just practice what we <laughs> took in the exam or we just do what is not absolutely minimum necessary. How do we grow? How do we grow as a professional? How do we excel? How do we help our organization excel? How do we help our countries develop, especially if we are in a developing country? Yeah? Uh, these are important questions, and that goes back to the issue of competence, which is, in my view, competence is a core ethical issue. So if we're going to focus only on what's in an exam, wow, how dangerous that is. Yeah, maybe I can get away for school, but then real life. Well, what do we do? If we have situation at work, we don't know the answer. What do we do? We start to Google and go, uh, you know, and ask friend, what would you do in this situation? How do we know? How do these people know? If I ask, and I had a situation once, years ago, an employee, and basically any, any task we ask her to do, she would call a friend or she would send an email for, for a friend because she doesn't know. She had a university degree and she didn't know. She was incompetent. And we discovered that basically almost many of the things she was doing at work, she would have to ask someone outside. Now, how dangerous that is, because technically, in order for that person to be able to answer, she would have to expose information about us. Now, if that person is not from a competitor, maybe no big deal. But how do we know? How do we know that person is not from competitor or maybe her friend is working for a competitor? And at the end of the day, our information will walk away. You've got to focus, yeah? Ethics, especially if we're going back to the ethics, since this video about ethics. Ethics is more than just passing an exam. Ethics is how do we behave every day at work. And not only whether it's a question of corruption or lies or cheating or copying, it's also about competence and being able to do our job to the best of our abilities. And unfortunately, many recruiters focus on a PMP, three letters, as a condition for employment. Uh, and it's unfortunately many managers, hiring manager, trust those letters because they think PMI is, wow, it's the largest, best global organization for project management, so it must be trusted. Unfortunately, I can't trust them because many PMPs do not know how to manage project, have never worked. So I, I'm never going to say many. I'm going to say some. And based on my own experience, some of those certified individuals have never worked in a project and in project management or project role. They've worked in technical tasks. So some of these people lie on their application, and unfortunately PMI barely does any audit to discover those people, and they can become certified by passing, and we don't know what the passing rate, it's secret, but it used to be in the 60s, which means in many engineering schools, 60s is a failing grade. Yeah. So basically now we have people who become PMP, probably never managed a project before, and uh, they learn how to pass an exam with uh, what many engineering schools consider a failing grade, and they behave as like they are expert project manager. Good luck. Good luck to, and I think the companies who hire people without really validating their experience through, like I have something I call the acid test, yeah? I can really know if someone knows project management or just somebody is faking it or, ah, look, I have a PMP or 
forgive me, it's not only PMP. I have Prince 2 or I have risk management certification or I even I have a PGMP. I don't care what three letters or four letters you have after your name. Can you prove to me that you are capable of doing the work? That's ethics. That's competence. Yeah? That's how we advance as individuals and as companies. Thank you and have a great day.